today I color white wine to make it red. You know, human mind is very powerful, so sometimes it makes you believe what you want to believe. And I'm going to do this in a very, very professional way. There are several things that you have to think about. I bought 12 different colors, and many of them are red or blue. So you see, 8 colors out of 12, they belong to either red or blue categories. And 3 out of 12 belong to yellow or brown. So actually, I can use all of this because red wine's color is not just red. Sometimes it's a little bit bluish and greenish. And when it gets old, it can be a little bit yellowish or brownish. Second, the nose. I'm going to make a color pretty similar to New World Bordeaux grape variety wine's color. Meaning, it should carry Bogdo grape variety's nose. The most representative smell is the green characteristic. So this Sauvignon Blanc will give the green characteristic Bogdo grape varieties usually carry. And then, the nose itself is not good enough. It can be too fresh if I use only this Sauvignon Blanc. So I'm going to use a Chardonnay aged in oak barrels. It'll give the buttery characteristics and then the biggest difference between red wine and white wine is the tannin. By using a barrel-aged white wine, you can give a little bit of the bitterness from tannin from the oak. I'm a wine professional. I have three master's degrees in wine from three different European countries. I know how to read wine's color. And I've tasted wine with my mentor for eight years. So I know exactly what he reads when he reads wine's color. So I'll do my best to trick him. And Peter, if you watch this video, this is not my intention. But I know you never watch my video, so probably it doesn't matter. So now I have a glass of Bordeaux grape variety red wine. And then I pour some Sauvignon Blanc. And then... Barrel aged Chardonnay. Yeah, it's toasty, oaky at the same time. It's green. Right now, these two wines' colors are so different. Ooh. Look at this. I'm gonna put purple. It's getting similar. Red color, a violet color, a little bit of grape purple. I should probably add a little bit of green. The green color makes it more purple, right? And then brown. <laughs> it's getting a little bit similar, right? <laughs> a little bit more violet, a bit more red. It needs a little bit more brown. Wow. Now it's getting really similar. And I taste it. For me, it definitely tastes like white wine. Because I know it's white. We'll see how much this wine would make a wine professional confused. Color-wise, it's hard to tell. I made this pretty good. Then I make this in a bigger quantity. Violet, sky blue, green, red, purple. <laughs> it needs more brightness. Wow, it's almost opaque. Not opaque, but very deep in color. Let me give uh, just a little bit more of... All right. That's it. Very similar, right? Very similar. Yes! So now I'm going to leave to treat my mentor under your request, my beloved subscribers. You ready? I'm ready. I thought this time would never come. <laughs> Today we have only one bottle of wine. One bottle of wine. So we get less and less these days, right? Probably for the next video, we won't have any wine in the mix. <laughs> <laughs> Today's theme is Wine Game Part 3. Oh my goodness. <laughs> These wine games, I plan it according to your requests. So if you want some very interesting experiment or wine game things, then please leave it on the comments below. That's a good idea. Are you ready? Yep. Today, could you serve the wine for me? Yeah. All right, thank you. Well, I remember the previous two games, right? Mm -hmm. One of them was a very good wine and a, a good but not super good mm -hmm. wine. Mm -hmm. And then the next one was blended wine, cheap and expensive. 
That was super interesting. Was super it? interesting, particularly because it shows you how far a little bit of quality goes. Yeah. If you haven't watched it, please refer to the link here. <laughs> and today it's the part three. Part three. Okay, let's have a look here. I think I need to keep this close. You need to keep... <laughs> Why? I have a feeling this is nasty as hell. <laughs> Why do you think so? It just doesn't look right. Why? It's purple on the one hand, and then it looks thin on the other hand. It it's... doesn't have density. There's no color complexity. It's like all one, one shade. It's a weird looking wine. I haven't even tasted it yet. Uh -huh. I haven't even really smelled it yet. It just looks weird. And this to me doesn't look like a real color unless it's very, very young. Mm -hmm. Or it's got added things added to it. It's opaque, no? No, not opaque at all. I don't see my finger through it. Your finger's missing. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what are you talking about, Peter? I see my finger. Really? Hold, it, hold it closer to this edge here, then you'll see your finger. Ah, yeah. <laughs> it's um, absolutely purple at the rim, like purple vermilion, as if it doesn't come from grapes. It's just a weird looking thing, or it's a different fruit. All oh, right. Or, or possibly some kind of grape, but from a non-traditional area. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, a really weird wine. It's a really weird wine. Yeah. Anything more about the color? I like the color. <laughs> you like the color? I like the color. The, it's not complex enough. The whole view of the wine is not complex enough. When you're dealing with uh, grapes, there are elements to the color. It's not just one color. There are gradations of color, almost like concentric circles. You always talk about yeah. it. Yeah. And, and there's a complexity to the color, irrespective of the color. There's a complexity. This is like one color dimension sheet. Uh -huh. And how is the smell? I smelled something green. There's no complexity there. There's still a hint of herbaceousness. Mm -hmm. It looks one-dimensional. It smells one-dimensional. It smells like wine. It doesn't specifically smell like red wine. But I'm not, not particularly worried about that because a lot of people, if they are blindfolded, they can't tell what they're drinking, smell or taste. So when you say that wine is Venus uh -huh. on the nose, it smells like wine. Specifically red or specifically white, no. Mm -hmm. What you have to do for that is to say, do I recognize a grape variety? All right. Because certain grape varieties stick out. So even if you can't see the wine, mm -hmm. you smell the wine and you say, with your eyes closed or with a blindfold, you say, it smells like Riesling. So it must be white. Not it's white. Which whites can it be? Mm -hmm. It smells like Riesling. It must be white. Mm -hmm. Or it smells like Sauvignon Blanc. It must be white. Or it smells like Cabernet Sauvignon or Syrah. It must be red. Okay. So, with my eyes closed, I don't think I could tell you if it's red wine or if it's white or pink wine with colouring added or something like that. I, I couldn't tell you. But your eyes are open. My eyes are, yes. It, it looks like red wine. <laughs> Widely open. Widely open. <laughs> if I had to guess, I'd guess it was a very, very cheap something in the Bordeaux group. Mm -hmm. Because there's an herbaceousness there, but it, it's not enough. There's no black currant, there's, no, you know, there's just a little bit of herbaceousness. And there's a bit of extract. And I expect extract from Cabernet, from Syrah, etc. As I say, it looks concocted. It does not look like it was born like this. Uh -huh. It looks like you made it in a test tube. Uh -huh. This is what it looks like to me. It's, it's concocted. It is? You're right. Uh -huh. It's concocted. <laughs> so you have to figure no, out what it is. I was losing it. No, I you are not but losing, I was losing it. it. No, it's concocted and you have to figure out what it is. Now it could be anything. That slight greenness could be Sauvignon Blanc, blended with something red. And how does it taste? <laughs> 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 I'm going to put it in my mouth one more time. All right. Let's be honest, it's one-dimensional, mm -hmm. but it's got a halfway decent balance. Mm -hmm. And you were sitting outside on a hot day drinking it, and you chilled it down a little bit, you might say it's okay. Mm -hmm. I can tell you this, if I had opened this bottle to drink with me and my family, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have 
drunk as much as I've already tasted. <laughs> right. So probably your family would drink it for you. I've, I hope that I've taught my family a little better than that. All but right. my neighbors would drink it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think it is? What do I think it is? Now that my mind can go every which way. I think it is a blend of red and white. Maybe a bit of Cabernet Sauvignon, maybe a bit of Sauvignon Blanc. That's what I think. You were correct with uh, Sauvignon Blanc. I was correct with Sauvignon Blanc, okay. Yeah. I tried to make it a little bit more complicated than... Than just that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you add colouring? Yes, I okay. added that, That's what I said right at the beginning. You're right. This colour is not real. Okay. <laughs> You're correct. I, okay. I added colouring. I, I think I've done enough. Okay. <laughs> I, uh... Peter, cheers. <laughs> And what do you taste? So I taste the Sauvignon Blanc now. Now that you gave me the idea that, or, or now that I, I got Good. to the impression that it, that it was a concocted wine. Then I started to say, okay, what if it's a blend of red, white? Then I started to pick up Sauvignon Blanc inside there. Mm -hmm. So you think it's partially Sauvignon Blanc? And, uh, and partially some coloring. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh, mega red or mega purple, one of the two. I don't know which one you used or, or, or what you used. I used red color. Violet, purple, a little bit of brown and green. Color. Yeah. And Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. And, and more? Yeah, one more, one grape, more variety. grape variety. Okay. So, I would still not know whether it were a red grape variety or a white grape variety because you've used all those different colors. Yeah, right. However, it does have extract. So, do those colors find their way into the extract? I suppose they can. They're just anthocyanins. So, they could find their way in there. So, maybe this is all white wine and no red wine at all. <laughs> That's correct, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Today morning I spent hours and hours to make this color, <laughs> combinating <laughs> different colors. <laughs> I know what you read from the colors. So I really try to create a similar color to red wine zone. Yeah, I blended two different white grape varieties. Two different white grape varieties? Yeah. The Sauvignon Blanc really shows up. And do you know why I added Sauvignon Blanc? You know, Sauvignon Blanc is the grandparent of oh. Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah. So I wanted to add some greenness in it. You did? <laughs> no, I can't figure out what the other white grape variety is. I used this white grape variety to add a bit of body, tannin and oakiness. I did pick up a little bit of oakiness. I don't know how much you used. So probably some California Chardonnay then? That's correct. Two thirds of New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, Kim Crawford, and one third barrel aged uh, Chardonnay. And then I poured that blended wine into a red wine, <laughs> red wine bottle. <laughs> You're diabolical man. <laughs> you know, there were some tests of doing this for many people and they believed what they saw. So they smelled and they tasted a red wine from it. I wanted to do it how it goes with a real wine professional. And how did I do? You did it well. Too much experience to accept that something that looks like this is real. And that was the starting point right from the beginning. It just didn't look real. In Korea for high school students there was a paragraph for a test talking about this experiment and uh, lots of lots of Korean students were curious about the reality of this test. I thought I made it quite successfully. I think you made it quite successfully. <laughs> which is not good. <laughs> which is not good. <laughs> So this may be really hard to be recognized for usual people. Yeah, yeah. No, no, for sure. I would have tricked lots of lots of people with this coloring. Yes, you would have. <laughs> yeah. I'm a very analytical taster and so I try to deconstruct the wine and so a lot of it didn't make sense to me. I had to say to you, this tastes like a concoction. Mm -hmm. Once you told me that it was a concoction, then I allowed myself to think outside the box. Uh -huh. Could it be white? Could it be red? As soon as I accepted the premise that it could be white, then I realized that what I had smelled, that smelled familiar, that was, I was struggling with, was something in blood. It may make even a wine professional a struggle. Oh well, yeah. Right? Yeah. So well, it must be... I did struggle. I'm sorry about that. My viewers, our viewers love they to love see it. it. 
They love to see me struggle. Don't you? <laughs> so now you guys have to do me a favor. Ask Jay if I can tell the difference between 10 vintages, a vertical of Chateau Petrus. <laughs> Hasta la vista, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> So for us to taste the 10 different vintages of Chateau Petrus, subscribe <laughs> and live a love. <laughs> okay, Jay, cheers. Cheers. I Thanks, can't Peter. wait for the next episode. <laughs> the wine games are getting worse and worse, harder and harder. I can't imagine what wine game number four is going to be like. I also don't have any idea about it. <laughs> Please leave your ideas on comments and then we'll think about it. Yeah. I thought. This was a quite pleasant drink. <웃음> <웃음> 이럴 땐이 와인 네이버 밴드로 놀러 오시면 와인을 잘 몰라도 편하고 싸게 사실 수 있도록 제가 많이 도와드립니다. 다들 만족하시고 좋아하시더라고요.